In this video, I'll be showing you how you can create a soft mottled background using acrylics. And then I'll demonstrate how you're able to use this technique for one of your own painting projects. In this particular demo, I'll be using this lovely pink flower. The reference photograph is from Pixabay and I'll add the link in the description below if you'd like to paint along with me. I'm using various tones of greens, yellows, purples, whites and a little bit of burnt sienna. And each time I go down to the canvas I'm going to be picking up a different colour. Now I have lightly misted the canvas with a little bit of water so this helps with that blending. I'm using a soft brush and a, a flip flop stroke so that I'm able to kind of blend as I go. Remember each time you go down to the palette you're going to pick up a different colour and actually do the blending directly onto the canvas. I'm also using a healthy amount of paint as well so that I'm not trying to stretch that paint too far. Again remember just mist that canvas very very lightly and that will really help with the blending issues that we sometimes face when we're using uh, acrylics. I'm switching now to a soft mop and while this area is still damp I'm lightly going to mop this area so that it's got that lovely out of focus look. So I'm continuing with the different colours, again each time I go down to the palette I'll be picking up a different colour, the greens, some yellows and some of that burnt sienna to kind of grey things down and mopping in between. I'm then going to dry everything off with the hairdryer. Now I'm going to begin a second layer. Once everything's thoroughly dry, I'm going to begin adding exactly the same colours but doing a second layer. And this will really get rid of any little white dots in the canvas. So again, I've misted everything with that um, water bottle, just very, very lightly misted everything. And then once again, I'm dipping into these various colours to keep that really lovely mottled background effect. Now I'm hoping that this technique really stimulates your imagination. In this particular case, we're, we're going to be doing a flower and we're creating the illusion of out of focus foliage in that background. But this can be used for any kind of project. You could maybe even put a bird or anything on there. But once you've got that lovely background, you're able then to add your detail on top. This is something I often tell my students, particularly with acrylics, don't add your subject on the top and try and paint your background around it. Get the background in first, let that thoroughly dry and then transfer your image on the top of your um, already completed background. You will find this so much easier than trying to paint around a bird for example or a flower in this particular case. So this is something I always do whenever I'm working in acrylics is I get the background details done first, I let that thoroughly dry and then I transfer my image on the top which I'll demonstrate in this video. So you can add as many layers as you like using the same technique but once you're happy with your background remember you must thoroughly dry this off with a hairdryer. So onto the dry canvas I have um, placed my tracing, taped it all the way across the top and now I'm transferring that image onto that dried acrylic. I've actually covered the back of this with um, charcoal so that the image just transfers over and I'm constantly lifting that up from the bottom so that I can check that my tracing is going through okay. 
So this video isn't really about the flower, it's more about um, the background, that it will stimulate your imagination. Um, like I said, you could be putting a bird on here, you could be using different colours um, and creating your own projects. But in this particular case, we're, we're going with the flowers. So very quickly, I'll uh, talk you through what I'm doing on this flower. So initially, I've made a pink colour using alizarin crimson and um, some white and I've just blocked in the uh, the basic shape of the flower there is absolutely no detail the beautiful thing about acrylics is that you can add everything on top so you just focus on almost coloring book style just blocking in those basic shapes with pinks in this case with the leaf I'm, I'm blocking in um, with sort of a yellow green just focusing on getting that outside edge shape and then blocking the inside. So again here you can see me using this yellow green colour. Um, and I'm using the brush on the chiselled edge so that I'm focusing on getting a really nice outside edge and then just simply blocking in the basic colours inside. Here I'm doing the same with the stem, just blocking that in with a burnt umber. Again, no detail at this stage, the details all added on the top. I am constantly drying between layers as well. Each time I want to start adding more details, I'll dry it in between. So now I'm back to the leaf and I'm starting to detail that. Again, just laying the different colours on and following that reference photo. I'm starting to add highlights to the branch using burnt sienna and white and I'm also now beginning to add some extra leaves and details again using that brush on the chiselled edge adding a shadow to the leaves and then also adding sort of brighter yellow greens and beginning to pick out some of those highlights Moving on to the flower now, I've made a darker mix of alizarin crimson and a little bit of purple and I'm beginning to add some of the veins and then I'll mix a slightly lighter pink and start to highlight the outer edges. Again I'm building up the detail on the flower, adding slightly lighter tones where necessary. And sometimes it's easier to go lighter with, a, with something like this and then glaze over the top of it and tint the colour back down. So I've mixed a thin colour of red and I'm now going to glaze that over the top. So because the paint is very thin, you're able to see all the details underneath. I'm now going to go back and add another layer of highlights. I'm back on the leaves now and I'm starting to detail those. So I'm jumping around the whole of the canvas, adding the highlights on the top. So you can keep adjusting this until you've got something you're happy with. So back to the flower now and detailing the extra um, veins and things that are in the flower. So I'm hoping this demonstration is really showing you how wonderful it is that you're able to layer with acrylics. And then, of course, add those thinner glazes and tint things as you need to. So always remember, as you're adding the details, to dry between the layers. And now add in a final red glaze as I conclude this painting. And here's the finished painting. I really do hope this has given you some ideas on how you can use a mottled background in one of your own painting projects. Thanks for watching.